Hi, I'm Terry Rooch. Welcome again to a great module from Sirius Automotive Training. Today we're in wonderful Adams County, Pennsylvania. Why is it important that we're in Adams County? Because Adams County is one of the 43 exempt non-participant counties for our emissions program in Pennsylvania. Why is that important to the safety inspection mechanic? Well, it's critical because as a mechanic is performing a safety inspection, they have to be fully aware of where the vehicle is registered for the type of inspection it'll be getting. So today, starting with my second module, part of the Sirius Automotive Training learning site, I would like to enlighten everyone with some more information regarding recertification and also initial certification for the Pennsylvania Safety Inspection Mechanic. So what's important to you is today we're going to cover some of the items that we're going to be using for reference material for our modules to be able to fully understand not only the duties but the rules and regulations of an inspection mechanic. So let's start beginning with some of our reference material. Why is it again important? Because not only is it required by law to have this information available in case of an inspection audit, but it's also very good material for the mechanic and the vehicle owner. So first off, I'd like to start with inspection bulletins. Bulletins are a critical piece to a daily inspection. Bulletins are dated all the way back through the 19 early 80s. They're dated on the top. I have hundreds of bulletins. They're packed inside a binder of mine. Critical information. Real important, I'll show you one that just may help with you on your daily inspections. I have a bulletin here dated October of 1986 for a Pulse Honda motorcycle. If you're not familiar with a Honda Pulse, I'm going to show you what a Honda Pulse is. This is a 1984 Honda Pulse motorcycle, titled, registered, and inspected in Pennsylvania. Why is that important to you? Because if you look at the definition of a motorcycle, it's three or less wheels on the ground. This is four wheels. But Pennsylvania Inspection Bulletin dated October 86, Pulse Motorcycle. The Bureau is currently registering motorcycles that are totally enclosed. Pulse motorcycle. One such vehicle is the Pulse, which is equipped with two outriggers, wheels. Because only three of the wheels touch the ground, the vehicle is in operation. The Pulse is a motorcycle. So real important, critical information here. The bulletins are wonderful. They take real world examples and form them of what we use for our inspection regulations. So let's continue on here. The next reference item that we're gonna be using for all of our training is of course, the inspection manual. The state calls this Publication 45. Publication 45 is updated regularly almost every two, three years at the most. We have them all the way back to the 60s. The current one is dated November 2017. This is my copy here. Publication 45. It's available online for free. If you want a hard copy, what I would recommend, go to your local state representative. He usually has a box, he or she. They're free. Just ask him for one. Let's follow up with our websites. Real critical information here. PennsylvaniaCode.com, PAcode.com. You could read Title 67 or you could read Title 75. In Pennsylvania, we use Title 75 almost as the crime code. When the police stop you, they cite you for Title 75. They cite you with a consolidated statute or maybe a 3301 for not paying attention to the signs. And you're not speeding, but a 3301 is a gimme. So they take that right from PA code Title 75, the crime code. We use PA code Title 67. That's the transportation code in Pennsylvania. So when we pull our regulations for safety inspections, for vehicle sales, for vehicle titling, we use PA code Title 67, the transportation code. Real important information. You also have to remember this information for your research test along with your initial set. So feel free to watch this at any time. 
Let's follow up here with two critical forms that we use, our motor vehicle forms and our TS or transportation forms. Two perfect examples right here. I have a TS form. This is displayed in an emission inspection station as a list for all your certified mechanics. Right here, this is a TS-516. We use a TS-443 for the safety inspection mechanics. This is a great example of TS form. Let's move on to an MV form. MV forms, motor vehicle forms. This is a 409 form. This is what you fill out when you pass your test. This will allow you to choose or take and provide the state from the school with your correct uh, passing scores. So the MV409 is also another critical form. Let's keep rolling here and roll into some of the requirements for the state inspection mechanic to initially take his test are two. You have to be 18 years old. So if you're an Italian, it's Dicciotto, but you cannot, you have to be fluent English. So very simple. You have to be able to read and write English to pass the test. And you also need to be 18 years old. What you should be aware of, there is no requirement to be a mechanic. There's no requirement to be employed at a mechanic facility. The state is encouraging you to be, have some type of mechanical ability, and you will have to perform a tactile test where you'll have to demonstrate the use of the essential tools required to inspect the vehicle. But for your information, you do not have to be employed as a mechanic. Next thing I want to talk about before we get started into our um, inspection categories is for an out-of-state mechanic. In Pennsylvania, you do not have to be a resident of Pennsylvania to work in PA as an inspection mechanic. For example, you live in Phillipsburg, New Jersey, you cross the bridge every day, you work in Bethlehem as a mechanic at a dealership. You are a resident of New Jersey. If you are unaware of this, it's on our fact sheets provided by PA all the way back to March of 2000. An inspection mechanic with an applicant with an out-of-state driver's license, a foreign county driver's license, foreign country, don't forget, or a probation license may become a Pennsylvania certified mechanic. Yes. There it is, right in black and white. Highlight it for you. So as I go through, I will point out where my information is from because I did hear it before. Again, let's go back into the requirements here for uh, safety inspection certification. And let's talk about the categories. There's three categories or codes for an inspection mechanic. This is my newest card. My card is labeled as a 4J. So I have all classes of vehicles and a J. The real simple, the J is the enhanced emissions category. What's important to understand as an inspection mechanic applicant, to ins get your category three inspection license, you do not need a CDL because there is a window, which we'll cover on my weight chart, of vehicles that you could drive up to with your car license that you can't inspect with a category one license. So that window of opportunity allows you to acquire a category three license. So you do not need a CDL, it's in black and white. What's important to understand is the school may not have a vehicle of that gross vehicle weight. For example, a 21,000 pound GVW flatbed with an, a rollback with an aluminum body, aluminum bed. It's under the CDL license weight, but it's above the category one license. So that vehicle fits into that window. So as a previous inspection instructor in schools, I had students that would bring those to the school where I would allow them to perform the inspection on. So it's very critical to remember that. Don't let a school turn you away and say, hey, you can't get your category three because you don't have a CDL. Well, you heard it from me. Email me, I'll show you in black and white. The next thing I want to point out is as we roll on here through the inspection information, these are not stickers. These are called certificates of inspection. 
So as we carry through and uh, utilize Publication 45 for our training, please remember we are calling these in Pennsylvania Certificates of Inspection. One last thing I wanted to uh, talk about as far as uh, the information relating to the county that the vehicle is registered in. And when we get into the subchapters, we'll also pound this out pretty good. But for now, I just want everybody to fully understand that with the addition of the emission inspection in Pennsylvania, the vehicles that are registered in the 43 non-emission required counties are not out of the loop. For example, you have a 74 Pontiac, Le Mans, registered in Adams County with an EGR valve removed, goes in for a safety inspection, no matter what county it's in a PA for the inspection, it will fail. It will fail. You have the same 74 Pontiac registered in York County, which is an emissions county, the vehicle is required to pass. The reason is the 74 is outside of the years for the emissions program in York County. In the non-emissions counties, they've added in a six items to the list of inspectable items where the EGR valve is now required. The first year for that program is the day one. So we're going back to 1963. So that same car in this county of Adams is required to have the emissions component, one of the six, where that same car that's registered in a non-emission or a full emissions county would pass even though it would not get an emission inspection okay let's move on here and close out for the for the day beautiful sunday here in adams county i just want to talk about the history of vehicle inspections pennsylvania was the first state we were the first to have an emission a safety program 1930 you could order my puzzles i have puzzles already uh ready to be shipped. I have a, a collage of safety inspection stickers on a collage on, on a puzzle. So feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in a puzzle. Pennsylvania was the first state in 1930 to implement safety inspection. California piggy tailed on us all the way back in the 50s and they started inspecting on new vehicles. Go figure. What's safe, the new one or the used one? Okay. So I just wanted to highlight some of that information again. I'll point out what I just covered for you, for all those schools out there that are happen to be watching me. We went over to reference material. We have two types of bulletins, safety bulletin, emission bulletin. You should be concerned either way. Publication 45, the inspection manual, download it from DMV site or get your free hard copy at your state representative. We talked about the website for the PA code title 67, transportation. PA code title 75. What's important to remember here? If you need to know the full description of a definition of a vehicle, component, an item, a process, title 75. Remember that. That's a critical piece. We talked about the, uh, the two forms, the motor vehicle forms, the MV, and we also talked about TS forms. Very important when we start going through these forms. Out-of-state mechanics, I showed you on the fact sheet. Fact sheets are critical pieces of information from the Department of Transportation, Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Kim Piazza's a wonderful girl. Next, we talked about the Category 3. Not required to have a CDL. Okay, real important. If you want to see it in black and white, I have that too. Next, our definition of the day, Certificate of Inspection. It's a sticker. Last but not least, I gave you a history on vehicle inspections all the way back to 1930. PA was the first. Right now, I believe there's only six states that require vehicle safety inspection. We're still the first, and we will probably be the last. So we'll regroup again in another day or two, and we'll pick up on module number three. And what we'll do is we'll jump right into the definitions, right out of publication 45, We'll make them interesting, we'll make them serious, and go out and go ahead and win. Good talking to you.